Hello. First off, I want to start off by saying thanks for watching this Rolls Battery Engineering training video. Uh, if you like it, great. Uh, go ahead and hit like. If you don't like it, uh, before you hit don't like, send me a message or hit don't like and send me why you didn't like it. Um, that way we can uh, try to make these videos better for you with more information and help you out a little more. Um, my name is Steve Higgins. I'm the technical, technical services manager for Rolls Battery. Uh, this is my contact information. So if you have any further questions on this, please be, feel, feel free to send me an email at steve at I'd be more than happy to answer any questions you might have. Here's a link for some materials. Uh, we have training materials. We have reference information, downloads. Uh, it's available off this tiny, tiny.cc link. Uh, if you want to email the request to me, steve at sret.com. Again, I will send you a link uh, to our uh, uh, Google Drive. Um, online webinars are available on YouTube. Of course, you're probably watching this via YouTube, so that's good. Um, today, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about end amps or return amps, what it is, why you would use it, why is it so important to make sure you get the setting the correct way. Uh, first thing to remember is in amps. Uh, there's a few things that goes by in amps or return amps generally in the market. Um, it's very important to make sure you have these set correctly. If you don't have them set correctly, then what will happen is you're going to have problems. So what it is, is that when a lead battery is nearing 100% full charge and dependent on the battery type, the amount of current flowing into that battery is going to drop to less than 1% to 3% of the total battery bank capacity. So, for example, let's say you have a 1,000 amp hour battery, uh, 1% to 3% is, you know, uh, is when your current goes below that setting, uh, many different battery manufacturers have a time period, but for rolls, typically it's less than 2% for 60 minutes. So once you get below that, you hold it for that 60-minute period, it's not really accepting any more current. So really, the batteries are charged. Um, generally, this setting is used to prevent overcharging of batteries. Um, what you normally see is like a, an, an RV or let's say you've got a remote house or you've got a home where you see, you know, solar is good. Solar is good, batteries are fully charged, and then the, a cloud blocks the sun or, sun, or you switch off the, 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 the charge controllers, you're doing maintenance, and then you reconnect. Uh, what will happen is, is that most charge controllers that don't use the NDAM setting will automatically go into a full bulk absorb setting again. And that could potentially overcharge your batteries if it, or, or, use a lot of, or cause a lot of extra gassing to your batteries. And so when you set your you set your absorption time, and then you have a secondary setting called end amps, and that secondary setting allows you to, you know, basically it'll see that the batteries are already fully charged, and when it sees the batteries are fully charged, it's going to go to float. And so it, it helps prevent you from uh, running that longer absorption time or excessive absorption times using up water uh, or even possibly causing heat damage to your batteries if you're continually absorbing your batteries. Um, back in the 20, 15, 20 years ago, you saw it with, we saw it with coach manufacturers where, uh, they'd be building a coach and they'd be, have the, the coach plugged into bay one, and then the coach would go to bay two for the next step in the manufacturing process and then bay three and bay four. And so basically you'd have guys unplugging to utility or shore power and then plugging it back and plugging it back in. They'd move it to bay three, unplug it, plug it back in. And so the batteries would go through these multiple absorption charges, and that would eventually kill the batteries or overcharge the batteries. For rolls batteries, we like to see the current drop below 2% for at least the full 60 minutes before the charger transitions to a float charge or that it, ex that it skips that absorption stage. So, for example, if you have two parallel strings of S6L16HCs, your battery bank overall capacity is 890 amp hours at the C20 rate. And that would mean that 2% is, is 17.8 amps. And what that means is that when you're charging your batteries and the current flowing into your batteries is less than 17.8 amps for a full 60 minutes, those batteries are really a full or 100% state of charge. 
Well, the, the one of the major problems with, with end and settings is that if your batteries are in a current sulfated state, which means they've got sulfate on the plates, they're presenting a higher resistance. That higher resistance causes voltage to rise much faster. Voltage rises much faster, so current drops off, because when you have high voltage, you get low current. And so what ends up happening is, is that the batteries, because they're sulfated, voltage rises very quickly, you know, within 20, 30 minutes to that bulk absorption setting. Okay, and now your current starts dropping off. As soon as your current drops below that 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 two percent value or that end amps value for the parameters time, depending on the product that you're using, now your sulfated battery, your inverter thinks it's full, or your solar charge controller thinks the battery is full, so it goes to float to protect the battery. The problem is, is that if that is true, if that happens. Now you're, because you're not going through that full absorption time period, you're not removing that sulfate off the plates. So that just exacerbates the problems. Okay. And so a, a sulfated battery bank becomes more and more sulfated and that just snowballs the whole situation. And, and after time, you know, six, eight, 10, 12, 24 months down the road, now you got batteries that are dead that the inverter thinks that they're full because of the way you programmed them. So the major issue with some of these is that different manufacturers use different settings, um, you know, and in no particular order. Uh, for example, Schneider Electric and Magnum, they have, if you're using their battery capacity or their battery monitor kit or uh, for their charge controllers, you know, like the MPPT 60-80 and the, uh, the and I'm sorry, MPPT 150-860 and the 600-100, uh, or even the inverter, it has a setting in there where you program the battery capacity. Okay, so if you set the battery capacity on a set of the two parallel strings of uh, of S6L 16HCs. That's an 890 amp hour battery. So if you program an 890 amp hours, as soon as the battery, the current going into the battery drops to less than 17.8 amps for one minute, the inverters or the charge controllers think that the batteries are full. The problem with that is, is that we want it to be there for 60 minutes. And the reason we want it to be there for 60 minutes is we want to prevent it from giving you, you know, loads can cause erroneous, erroneous settings um, there's a lot of things that can, you know, sulfation can cause problems. So we want you to hold that there for that whole time. So for example, for Schneider and, and, uh, uh, Magnum energy products, you want to set that battery capacity lower. And what that'll do is that will lower your end amps parameter. Generally that, that number is about 20 to 25%. So for this battery bank, uh, I'm going to set that battery capacity for 890 amp hour, or that 890 amp hour battery. I'm going to set the capacity between six and 700 amp hours. I'm probably going to start at 650 amp hours. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my specific gravities, you know, three, four or five weeks down the road. And if my specific gravities are coming in too low, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lower that number, you know, and so lower that number, maybe add a little bit more absorption time to get those specific gravities up. And so, for example, you know, if it's set to 650 and my specific gravities are 10 points, you know, they're 1245s and 1255s versus 1265s and 1275s. What I'm going to do is I'm going to probably add about a half hour to the absorption time and lower from 650 amp hours to about 600 amp hours, give it a couple more weeks and then recheck and then see where my specific gravities went from there. They should go up. And if they go up, you know, then you know, what you do is, is you can again fine tune if they go too high, then instead of going from, you know, instead of leaving the, the absorption time alone, and then I set the, the, the battery capacity back up to 625 amp hours, and then I recheck it again in a couple of weeks. And with that fine tuning, you can really fine tune the battery bank charging to make sure that the system is the systems are uh, working properly. Um, some of the other manufacturers, like for example Outback, when you know they have the the the, the FM60 and the MX60 and their 100 amp charge controller, they have an end amp setting on that. 
um, again, it's there's no delay time. So generally, what you know, what I will do is uh, I will set that for about one to one and a half percent of the so 890 amp hours. I'm going to set that down to about nine to 12 amps for your end amps if you're truly going to use it. Most of the time, I recommend that customers disable end amps on their solar because you want to maximize how much solar you're getting into the battery bank. And so to do that, you basically want it charging as much as you possibly can during the day so you can maximize how much production that you're getting. Um, uh, you know, companies like, you know, other companies have different ways of setting that end damp. So just, you just need to be aware of how that specific company operates that specific setting. Um, you know, the one thing to keep in mind is that if you have a sulfated battery bank, end damps should always be disabled. Uh, and typically to, to disable end damps, you set the, the either end damps to zero or you set your battery capacity to like, you know, 50, 100 amp hours. That's not going to affect the, the, the inverters or the charge controllers. It's just going to affect when it terminates that absorption time, when it skips absorption time and assumes the batteries are full. Uh, I know this was a short one. Uh, I try to keep them short and sweet. It looks like we're about 12 minutes in. Uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to send me an email. My email address is steve at surrette.com. I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have for it. Um, appreciate you listening. Appreciate you watch, watching. Again, if you like it, like it. Great. Awesome. That's awesome. Uh, if you don't like it, let us know. Let us know what we can do to fix it uh, and uh, make this make the video better for you. Have a good day.